Today we're gonna to make some cinnamon rolls that I think rival Cinnabon. So there's three items that we need to prepare to make this recipe happen. The first is an enriched dough made with eggs and butter. The second is a filling made with brown sugar, cinnamon, and vanilla. And the third is a cream cheese icing made with, you guessed it, cream cheese, powdered sugar, and butter. Let's jump right in. All right, first things first, let's bloom our yeast. So um, grab a little bit of sugar, just a pinch of sugar, put that at the bottom of the bowl, then add one cup, 227 grams or eight ounces of warm water. Shoot for 100 degrees Fahrenheit, that's a good temperature. And then add two teaspoons of active dry yeast. It's kind of nice because that's the measurement that's in one of these little quarter ounce packages. So we're just gonna sprinkle that all over the top, like so. Let's give it a quick little stir here. We're good. Now, we're gonna put that aside and let it bloom for about four to five minutes. Now. Grab a big mixing bowl like this. I'm gonna mix my dry ingredients together in this bowl. So let's start with some all-purpose flour. We're gonna do 20 ounces, 567 grams, or about four cups. I'm gonna add that. Next, you're gonna add two and a quarter ounces, 65 grams, or about a third cup of white sugar. Followed up by oh, about a third ounce, oh, come on, a third ounce of sea salt. That's 10 grams or a one and a quarter teaspoons. Okay, here's my little trick. I wanna use buttermilk in this dough, but I don't wanna heat the buttermilk because you know it can curdle when it gets warm. So I'm using warm water with the yeast and I'm gonna use some buttermilk powder in the dough. That'll give me buttermilk. You could also just use warm whole milk if you want to. That'll give you great cinnamon rolls too. So an ounce and a half, 40 grams or four tablespoons of buttermilk powder go into my dough. Let's give everything a quick stir with a whisk and then just make sure you form a well in the center for our wet ingredients. We're gonna start with two whole large eggs. Then grab the yeast and the water, so your bloomed yeast and water. And if you were using uh, warm milk, it would be uh, your warm milk and yeast. Make sure you get every little bit out of the bowl. And finally, add two ounces, 57 grams, or about four tablespoons of room temperature butter. Make sure it's room temperature, that's very important here. It's hard as a rock, it's not gonna incorporate into the dough properly. So I'm gonna use a fork to uh, start to mix these ingredients. And uh, once the dough starts to come together, I'll move to my hands and I'll just end up dumping everything out onto the counter. Use the fork to press the butter into the dry ingredients. That'll help incorporate it uh, a little bit easier. I'm gonna do this for another 30 seconds or so. And then I'm gonna move over to my hands and start kneading the dough. All right, let's dump this dough out on the counter and start kneading it here. Just gonna work it by pressing the flour and the wet ingredients, or rather the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients together. Just keep moving it around, trying to incorporate. So a good kneading technique here is to push the dough out with the palm of your hand, fold it back over, and then turn 90 degrees and repeat, and just keep doing this. That'll help form gluten and incorporate all the ingredients together evenly. And if you think the dough is a little sticky, this one is because it's kind of humid outside. My environment's humid. I'm gonna add a little extra flour to this to help uh, keep it from being too sticky. That way I can work with it easier. So I'm gonna dust the counter with a little bit of flour, put a little flour on top of the dough. Uh, I'd say that's about a, a hefty tablespoon's worth. And then I'm gonna keep kneading, same thing. Pushing out with the palm of my hand folding over, turning, repeating, folding, repeating. And do this over and over again until all of the ingredients are evenly incorporated. There we go. And the dough starts to look smooth and silky. Moving your hands around like this, just kind of moving the dough around in your hands will help form it in, you know, into a ball and tighten it up a little bit. Just like this. Perfect. So grab a mixing bowl, grease the inside of it, and then just drop your dough in there, cover it with some plastic wrap, and let it sit at room temperature for a few hours until it doubles in size. This is a great opportunity to make the other ingredients that we need for our cinnamon rolls. Let's start with our icing. Now, I normally use a stand mixer to, to prepare it, um, but I'm gonna try to do it by hand. I'm warning you, if I can't make that happen, if I, if I fail miserably, I'm gonna break out the stand mixer. 
We're gonna start by adding an ounce and a half, 42 grams or three tablespoons of room temperature butter. Now whisk this for a little bit just to break it up. Now it's gonna get stuck in the tines for sure, but just keep working it until it's a little lighter in color, slightly fluffy. Not sure if you can see that, but we're pretty much there. It took me about, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute. To this, we're gonna add our powdered sugar. This is four ounces, 113 grams or one cup, and it's sifted. I sifted it before I measured it. Carefully just incorporate that into the butter without making too much of a mess. It should look sort of pebbly like this when it's done. Yeah, that's good. Now, add a quarter teaspoon of sea salt, fine sea salt. If you got kosher, that'll work too. Then we're gonna do a half teaspoon of vanilla extract, or a little more, because I'm dribbling some in there. That's good. We're gonna add a little bit of lemon zest here. I think this is what Cinnabon does with their icing, by the way. They add a little lemon juice or zest or something, but we're gonna add, we're gonna add zest. I'd say maybe the zest from, uh, eh, half of this lemon. How about that? And we gotta add room temperature cream cheese. Now, I broke this up into tiny little pieces to help it incorporate a little easier since I'm not using a stand mixer. Whisking by hand, you know, things need to be really soft or really small to help incorporate everything together. So. Slowly here, I'm gonna start working the ingredients together. And over time, should have a pretty nice, thick cream cheese icing. All right, so this is looking pretty tight. I can smell the lemon. There's plenty of lemon in there. So let's forego the lemon juice and I'm gonna add just a little bit of milk, maybe a tablespoon. And I'm gonna switch over to a spatula. I'm not gonna forget about this icing on the whisk here, trust me. But I'm gonna start moving this around and trying to incorporate the milk into the icing, then I'll switch back to the whisk. I gave up. Went to the stand mixer. <laughs> All right. Let's see, I need to transfer this, this icing into a container of some sort. We're gonna hold on to it until the cinnamon rolls come out of the oven. Let's do that. And then you can just hold this either in the fridge or on the counter, you know, the, the morning of. If you do hold it in the fridge, I would highly recommend that you let it acclimate to room temp before you try to spread the icing onto the cinnamon rolls. But since I made this batch the day before I'm baking, it's going in the fridge for now. All right, next, we gotta make our filling. So grab a small to medium sized mixing bowl and to it, add six ounces, 170 grams or about one cup of light brown sugar. Next, we're gonna grab a quarter teaspoon of some fine sea salt. And then we're gonna add some spices. So cinnamon's the main flavor component in a cinnamon roll. So we're gonna go big here. We're gonna do about a half ounce, 12 grams or a tablespoon and a half of ground cinnamon. And then a little secret ingredient here, a pinch or about an eighth of a tablespoon of ground black cardamom. Totally optional ingredient. You don't have to add that if you don't want to. We're gonna finish up with a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. There I go dribbling again. Okay, and then let's give it a quick stir. Then we'll put it aside until the dough's rolled out. So yeah, just make sure everything's evenly incorporated here. Just try to break up the large bits of brown sugar here. Okay, yeah, that looks, that looks pretty good. All right, let's put this aside. Then we can grab our dough and wow, look at that. Whew. That turned out pretty darn good. Doubled in size perfectly. It took about two hours. Mm, man, I can smell it too. Nice and yeasty. All right, so I'm gonna flour the board here so my dough doesn't stick too much. Moderately floured, like that. I'm gonna turn the dough out onto the counter. Carefully. There. Ooh, look at that. Now, flour the top of the, the dough so it's not so sticky, just like so. Then grab a rolling pin and roll it out so it's about a quarter of an inch thick and forms about a 15 by 18 inch rectangle. I think that's about the right dimensions. The eggs and the butter in this dough make it very easy to work with, so uh, it's kind of nice. All right, I think we're pretty much there. Let's see here. A little over 18 by about half an inch. 18 and a half inches by 15 on the dot. That's good for me. 
good for you, good. Okay, now we need to paint about four tablespoons of room temp butter onto the surface of this dough. A few things that's gonna do, um, it's gonna keep the filling from uh, seeping into the dough while the dough rests overnight. And it's gonna add some flavor and tenderness to the inside of the cinnamon rolls. Go ahead and paint edge to edge, except for over here, leave yourself about a, a half inch to an inch on the end here, we're gonna pinch the dough together at the end when we roll it, and we don't want butter right there. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now, onto the filling. Even coat all the way around, except for this little inch on the end here. Leave that open. Again, we're gonna pinch the roll closed, seal it up, and we need that to be clean. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, we're good. So now we need to roll this up and we're gonna work with the shortest edges here. Start with the edge that has the filling all the way to the end. And you're gonna start by giving it a nice tight roll. And then you're just gonna carefully continue to roll from one edge to the other. A good way to do that is to roll a little bit in the center, then work your way out to the edges. And then start again a little bit toward the center, work your way out toward the edges. All right, we're at the end here. Now we need to pinch this part closed. And I'm just gonna take the dough and pinch it, really. I mean, that's just it's that easy. All the way through. Like this. And then you just roll it onto its seam. There. Now we gotta cut our cinnamon rolls. You can use a knife, but if you do that, you're gonna deform the rolls when you cut them. So use some dental floss. That'll stop that from happening. You take the floss and you run it under the roll. I'm gonna start in the center here and cut two even pieces. And you just wrap it around and go pull, just like that. Now we have two even cinnamon rolls. Then I'm gonna cut these in half and then half again. Okay, again, going underneath the cinnamon roll. And then I'm gonna wrap it around and pull. All right, we got eight rolls. Grab yourself a greased pan, like so. This is a nine by 13 pan. It's great for this size recipe. And you're just gonna add the rolls to the pan, leaving an even amount of space between all of them. Just like that, good. Now wrap the pan up nice and tight with plastic wrap. Throw it in the fridge overnight. Tomorrow morning we'll pull them, let the rolls slack out on the counter for a couple hours at room temperature, then we'll bake them off. All right. The rolls have rested in my fridge overnight and I left them on the counter for a few hours this morning. You can see that the dough has risen a little bit more and filled the gaps between the rolls. And that slow rise in the fridge overnight is gonna help us deliver some additional great flavor to the cinnamon rolls. Now, I'm gonna bake these in a 325 degree oven because I have convection. If you have a conventional oven, go 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And if they start to brown a little too much on the top, just tint the pan with some foil. That'll stop that. And after about 30 minutes of baking, we'll pull the rolls, frost them, and they'll be ready to go. All right, after 30 minutes, this is what they look like. The rolls should be lightly browned on top and about 190 degrees to 200 degrees Fahrenheit in the center. This batch of icing is good for an entire batch of cinnamon rolls, so grab it and go to town. Just spread an even amount of icing over each roll. Like so. All right, this looks pretty good. All right, let's cut into one of these. I'm using a plastic spatula because I have a nonstick pan and I don't want to damage it. And I'm also kind of like a center cinnamon bun kind of guy. So uh, I don't want the corner piece. I want dough on both sides. Ugh. There we go. All right, stuck to the bottom a little bit. What do you think about that? Look good? I'm licking my fingers right now. I don't normally eat in front of the camera, but I gotta give this a try, I can't wait. Yeah. Some of this extra frosting here. Awesome, so good. If you guys haven't subscribed already, definitely consider subscribing to my channel. Share this video with all of your friends and give me a thumbs up be really appreciated. Catch you guys next time.